Okay, so let's talk about heat and internal energy, which are very different things, but are closely related. And so internal energy, we've discussed before, um, back when we were looking at uh, energy in general. Um, so if you think back and if you think, you know, if we had a, a box sliding across a surface, which had friction and some kinetic energy, so it was moving this way, then some of that kinetic energy would bleed out. So if this thing ended up stopping, so the kinetic energy was zero, that energy had to go somewhere. Part of it went into internal energy. And then we just say, you know what, we'll, we'll talk about that later in the year. Well, the time has come. So now we can talk about this internal energy. <coughs> so when we refer to internal energy, we're talking about all of the energy that's associated with the particles. So we're looking at the micro level. So inside of the material itself. So inside of a material, you know, if it's a if it's a gas, which is what we we're looking at, mm -hmm. then these particles are, are moving around and they're flying everywhere. And so those are that's kinetic uh, random translational energy, and it's this one that we uh, learned is related to the temperature, like of the gas or material. But there's other types and there's like there's rotational because these particles not only are they flying translationally in the line, but they're also rotating, they're moving around some axis. And so we have a rotational energy. In addition, and particularly in a, in a solid, you have these bonds between these objects. Well, they don't even really need to have bonds, but there's going to be a vibrational motion. So these particles, they actually sit there and they're vibrating back and forth like so. The thing is, we don't need to worry about this one or this one. So all we're really concerned with is that translational, which is related to temperature. <clears throat> but know that there's also a potential energy that's associated with the forces. So uh, the particles within them are pulled, uh, are held, it's particularly in a solid, um, they're held by some some attraction or repulsion between the, the particles themselves. And so there's some potential energy that's stored in there that can be freed up. Um, but we don't need to think about that either. So when we're talking about this internal energy, what we're really gonna be talking about uh, in this course is the, ran the random kinetic energy of translational motion, which is related to the temperature. That would be our internal, which would be, um, we also call thermal energy. thermal energy. But know that this one is not this. Internal energy is all of it. But this uh, this one single one that's related to the translational kinetic energy, that's what we're referring to as thermal energy. So heat. Um, heat, we, some, we represent with the symbol uh, Q, capital Q. And this is the process. So the process of transferring energy across the boundary of a system. And this occurs because of a temperature difference. So th this is the key right here. It's a process. It's not the energy itself, although they're going to be equivalent. It's not the same. So if, if we take a, I don't know, say we had a, let's just say a, a container of water. So we have some fluid, a water, we'll say. And below in the water, we put, uh, we put fire. So this fire has a lot of internal energy. This has a really high temperature. So these particles are really flying around. So we have really high internal energy. Well, some of that energy is gonna be moved into, let me get a different color. Some of the energy from here is going to be transferred into the water. This is across the boundary of the system. We would say the system's boundary would be, you know, this container, maybe. Particularly if this was, say it's a sealed box, we're heating it up. So we're pouring energy into this. And since we're pouring energy in, um, the little particles in here are going to get faster and faster and faster. They're going to gain kinetic energy, thus the temperature is going to go up. Well, this process of moving energy 
from here into a new one, that's called heating. That's Q. So we refer to it as heat, and I'll do this all the time, but it's it would actually make more sense if we always called it heating so that we understand that it's a process. It's a process through which um, energy is transferred. It's not a, a, a substance in itself. It's rather how we're doing this. A good analogy of this, um, one way to think about it, <clears throat> is if we... I'm going to go back to a box. So if we have a box and you stand behind it and start pushing on it, this thing is going to gain energy. So it starts you know, with an initial velocity of zero. But after some time, after you're pushing on it, it has some kinetic energy. And where did the kinetic energy come from? Well, it came from you pushing on it, which we call work. So work itself is not, it's not a quantity, it's not a substance, rather it's a transference of energy, in this case the person, into the object. And so now this object has some of the energy which came from this person. So work is like heat, they're, they're similar. And in fact, we'll show that we can do the same. We can use heat and work um, in the same process. So just keep in mind, this is a process of transferring energy. So now let's look at this FET sim. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to heat up this iron block. And then I can put a thermometer on it so you can see. And then I'm going to put energy symbols. So we can see that there's, there's some energy in this thing because it has some temperature. It's not at absolute zero. Now, Here's a question. How let's look at this. How does the end, how does the temperature of this block it has six energies compared to the temperature of this brick, which has two energies? So if I put this one on there, what we'll see is that they're the same. So we have to be careful with energy is not temperature because we're looking at internal energy. Um, so be careful with this, uh, how we're visualizing this. Now this has more energy, which is related off to its um, heat capacity. So we'll be talking about that in the next lesson um, or in the next segment. So anyway, let's let's heat this thing up. And what you see is you'll see some uh, you'll see some energy flowing from the flame into the iron. And when we do that, you see the temperature increase. <clears throat> so now we have a lot of energy. A lot of energy sitting in the iron. And if you watch, you see how that one escaped? So it lost some energy. Now, why would it lose some energy? Well, because it's, it's surrounded by air. And so it's trying to reach thermal equilibrium. So the iron is actually heating up the air right above it. So the, the little loss in temperature will affect the temperature of the air. I don't know if we'll see that or not. I think this little thermometer only does like objects. Well, whatever. Okay, so now what I want to do though is just show that how that works is we're gonna drop the iron on the brick and see what happens. So you can see the temperature of the iron is decreasing and the um, brick is increasing as energy moves from the iron into the brick. Oh, did they already reach equilibrium? Yeah, it looks like. But you can see this one still has more energy overall because it has a larger heat capacity. Like even the brick lost one. Anyway, that's the general idea. What happened if we dropped it in here? Now you can see most of it fly out of the iron into the water because the water was at a lower temperature. So that's heat. Heat is this uh, general transfer uh, between So heat, number one, is not energy. And it is not temperature. Heat is the process of transferring energy. And that is usually in the form of thermal energy. So the transference, not energy, not temperature. So to say something has a lot of heat is incorrect. That's an incorrect statement. It's not a quantity which can be possessed. So the units in heat. Um, 
you might already be familiar with these, but we need to clarify uh, calorie, especially the big C calorie. So a calorie is defined as the energy transfer necessary to raise the temperature of one gram of water from 14.5 to 15.5 degrees Celsius. Now you may have heard this before. It's um, you, we talk about a, a change in temperature of one degree Celsius, and that's good enough. The thing is, is that as the temperature changes at, at different ranges, you need a different amount of energy. Um, they discovered this afterwards, and so they found that they needed a better definition. So they defined it as thus, but one degree Celsius is fine. <clears throat> so that's defined as one calorie. Now that's little c. Big C, they also called a food calorie. So a food calorie. These are the ones that are on the on your nutrition labels. Um, this is equivalent to a thousand of these. So one cow, one big C is equal to a thousand little C's. And then we can also there's these the BTUs, the British Thermal Unit. So uh, again, it's 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 determined by uh, raising the, a quantity of material um, a degree. And so BTUs are like if like the heater in your home um, are usually measured in uh, BTU. So the number of BTUs, the amount of energy it can output into your home in order to heat it. Now heat we defined as a transfer of energy. And so since it's a net transfer of energy, we can also use joules because joules is energy. So we can define it in terms of, 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 joule, of joules. One cow, one little cow, is equal to 4.186 joules. Or one kilocal is equal to 41.86 joules. And one kilocal is one big cow. So those are just handy to know. So now we can start tying this all together um, with the mechan mechanical equivalent of heat. And this was uh, James Jewell, he did this experiment. So set up an apparatus like, like this, where you had some suspended masses tied to ropes that went around an axle that was tied to had to have paddles inside of, a, of a, a vat of water, which was thermally insulated, meaning that no heat could flow in or out. You couldn't have a heat flow in or out. Um, so there's no energy being moved between the, the systems. And so by releasing this, this would then spin the, the paddles. And what would happen is you would have an increase in the temperature of the um, water. So what, what this shows is that mechanical energy is, does the same thing as heat, as heating. Because we could have the same temperature rays through, um, you know, like a, a fire down here. We could have the same temperature rays. So these are the same. So we, mechanical work is the same as heat. Um, it's all energy transfer. That's what's important. So let's do a, a problem and then we should be done for this lesson. So a student eats a dinner, which has 2000 calories and that's a big C. So be careful with that. He wishes to do an equivalent amount of work in the gym by lifting a 50 kilogram barbell. How many times must he raise the barbell to expend this much energy? Assuming he raises the barbell two meters each time he lifts it and he transfers no energy when he lowers the barbell. So we have this guy, um, and he's raising a barbell, you know, from here up to here. So we have a change of two meters and that would be a, a height. We we'll would call it H. And basically what he did is he consumed a certain amount of energy and he consumed 2000 calories of energy and now he wants to work it off. And so work is change in energy. And the work in this case would be uh, him against the force of gravity. So it'd be MG, that's the weight of the dumbbell times the height. But we want to know how many times does he have to do this work in order to get rid of the energy that he was given, which was 2000 calories. But now we have to change this. This is 2000 calories 
big C and we got to get it into joules. So times that's one big C is 4,186 joules. So if we do that calculation, we get just over 8 million joules of energy that he has to expend. And so we want to know the number. So the number, the number of lifts would be the change in energy divided by MGH. And we could substitute in all those numbers. So that would be 8372000 divided by the mass, which is 50 kilograms times G, which is 9.8, times the height, which is two. And calculating that, we get about 8,500 times, 8542.86. Now, this is all kinds of assumptions. Um, because the 2000 calories, that's, that's, that's about a daily intake. Um, you, and you could work that off. Yeah. I mean, if I ride my bike for about an hour and a half, that's about a thousand calories. Um, because a lot of the calories, a lot of the energy that we get from calories, we actually burn up metabolically just by staying alive. Um, so breathing and moving our blood around. Um, so you really wouldn't need to do this mini in reality in order to burn it off. But this is just to get the idea that um, we're talking about big numbers here and in terms of energy. And that's it for this.